here. We're back here with Trevor Noah. You might have a perspective on this. Uh, there's been a lot of trouble in the state of Virginia. Yes. Uh, in the last two weeks. Yep. Over revelations over politicians who have used blackface right. in the past. Right. Okay. Um, uh, 39% of, of, of respondents in a poll just said they think it would be okay to wear blackface uh, in a Halloween costume. These respondents are white people. Uh, <laughs> it, it, they didn't say in the poll. They just said 39%. No, no, I'm telling you, these respondents oh, oh, are sorry. white people. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> sure. What do you think, what, what could be said to drive home the idea that, no, that's, that's not a good idea? You know what, I think in many ways, America is always going to come into this problem if you do not have conversations around the history of the country, how America came to be, and conversations around race, right? So a lot of the time, Americans want to jump quickly from, okay, black people can't vote, now you can't vote, now everything's done, we move on. It's like, no, but you have to talk about the ramifications of what that came with. You have to talk about the ramifications of Jim Crow. You have to talk about the ramifications of slavery. You have to talk about the ramifications of, of the minstrel shows. You have to talk about all of this. And if you have those conversations, people will understand it. If you are taught about blackface in schools and the symbolism and what it means, then I think a lot more white people will understand. But like, a part of me also goes, you, you, I can understand how a person can be ignorant and say, well, I, I don't get it. I mean, I've seen, I've seen white chicks. Why is that okay? How the, the Wayans brothers did white chicks, why can't I do blackface? And you're like, because white chicks was never used to oppress anybody other than moviegoers. Like, <laughs> like you Quality get what I'm saying? It's quality entertainment. Right, it's a well, funny movie. Things, no, it's a funny movie, but One of the things is... I like about South Africa, one of the things I admired is the Truth and Reconciliation Yes, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't perfect to get... It wasn't perfect, but it was but an yes. attempt to right. do something. I, it, it's just conversations. That's why for me, I go, Governor Northam, I would keep that guy in office for as long as possible because now he's being forced to talk about it. You know, and that's, that's what people should be doing. Have the conversations. Go out there and say, this is what I did. This is what I don't understand. Let's have these conversations and listen. And Northam has to listen now. You hear, he's on, he's like, I'm reading Roots. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah, that, that's, I want, yeah, I want sure. a governor who's reading Roots. Somebody should make a TV series out of this. They should, they should. That would be a good show. It's so good. Really good, so but a good. mini, mini show, not like a full series, just a mini series. Um, uh, Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz is almost too boring to talk about. But <laughs> CNN had him on last night yes. for a town hall. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think anybody watched. They evidently, it was like the lowest rating thing in the right. history of humanity. But <laughs> what do you make of a person who, like, like 40% of the people have even heard of his name. Right. Only 4% think him running is a good well, idea. Well, I think Howard Schultz is another example of how when you are an extremely rich person, you live in an entitled bubble that makes you believe that you can do whatever you, can, you, you want, and the world actually reinforces that idea. Because I never cease to amaze, I never cease to be amazed that money makes you think you know things you don't know. Yes, but it do, uh, because you have all of it. I understand that. If you are a billionaire, I would think I know everything because I have all of the people of all the money. You know like, everything. Like, all the money of all the you people. You know everything other than not to take pictures of your penis. <laughs> as Jeff Bezos has proven to us. We, we'll get to that, but here's the thing, here's the thing with Howard Schultz. Will we get to Jeff Bezos' we, we'll penis? Get to, we'll get to his penis. We'll make room for his penis, Stephen. We'll get Steven. there together, brother. We'll get to his penis, my friend. <laughs> okay, here's the thing about Howard Schultz for me, right, is if you, 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 you're a billionaire, he wouldn't be getting this coverage if he were any other politician, right? right? They would go, well, what's your polling? We're not even gonna put you on TV. But because he's a billionaire, people wanna talk to him. But if you, if you look at his, 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 his policies, he's being disingenuous. Run as a Democrat, and if your policies are good enough, you should be the primary winner. But you know that they're not strong enough to beat other Democrats, so you're gonna run as an independent because it's that billionaire mindset that you have. And all you're doing, all you're doing is stealing votes and you're just messing things up for people because America doesn't really have choice. It's got two choices. So you're gonna come in there and you're gonna mess up. Like, if you believe in your ideas, go and fight your ideas up against other ideas and see what happens. And you know you'll never lose your primary funder yourself. Because you are... Ex right. Exactly. You'll always stand and by as, you. And as for the penises, I'm shocked that Jeff Bezos was taking <laughs> pics for himself. I'm just saying, at that level of wealth, I would have a <laughs> pick here. <laughs> I'm just gonna put Andy it out Leibowitz there. Andy Leibowitz come in, you know? I would have... It's amazing. I would, like, that's, like, something that I would just assign... I will tell my, like, executive assign... I'd just be like, uh, Daniel, get, make sure you send a <laughs> pick to, uh, Sarah and Mary, please. Get, get from my catalog. I just have, like, a, like an exclusive sure. catalog <laughs> of special <laughs> pics that I've sent Oscar out. Who won the Oscar for best cinematography yeah, last year? I would, like, a, I want a Guillermo del Toro. Like, mm -hmm. I want that kind of level of, you know what I mean? I want, like... Tell to bring the IMAX camera. That's what I want. 
I want portraiture. I don't even send pics if I'm a billionaire. I want these things painted. <laughs> I'm gonna send you marble sculptures yeah, of sure, my penis. That sure. is what I will send you yeah. if I have that kind of yeah. money. Yeah, maybe like a Picasso. Give me like six of them. I, like I want, <laughs> yo. That's what disappointed me with Jeff Bezos. I was like, the pics. Mm -hmm. Also, all look poor, Stephen. They all look poor. No, like old look like. You, you gotta hang out with a better class of, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> well, on that high note, let's. It's for young readers. <laughs> it's born to cry. Trevor Noah and the paperback.